It's time to Talk Pittsburgh with Heather Abraham. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for Talk Pittsburgh. I'm Heather Abraham and we have a great group of guests and topics for you today. So let's talk Pittsburgh. Fans mourn the loss of the popular Choco Taco in 2022 after 40 years. And if you found yourself longing for the treat, a local pastry chef is showing us how to make a similar version right at home. And it's time for another book of the month. A local professor spinning a tale of time travel, murder and revenge all set in a futuristic Fitz Pittsburgh. But first, the public doesn't always get the full story when it comes to certain events in history and pop culture. The podcast You're Wrong About is setting things right and giving you a new perspective on what was going on behind the scenes. And I'm joined now by the host, Sarah Marshall. So good to meet you. So good to meet you. Thank you for coming on Talk Pittsburgh. Of course. So what brings you to town? We have been doing a uh, springtime live show tour. So this is... Uh, we had a show at Mr. Small's last night, and then I get to have a week off and hang out with my friends here. That's awesome. So tell us more about your podcast and what inspired you to start it. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm so happy to, to still be doing it. We started it five years ago, and it, to me, was inspired by the fact that I was a freelance journalist at the time and was having such a hard time placing stories that I felt were very interesting, um, but that were about history. They weren't about breaking news, they weren't tied to some kind of recent event, but just about the question of what if we look at the way we understood the story, something like Amy Fisher, Lorena Bobbitt, uh, the McDonald's hot coffee case. Right. Something that we felt we really understood at the time, but actually that now that we have the capacity to go back in and look at it with more nuance, we're gonna find a lot more. Time can sometimes give us more facts. So what have you found? Like, what's the most interesting thing that you've found in the course of doing this podcast? Because you now have done more than 200 episodes. I've lost, I think, <laughs> yeah, at least approaching that. I mean, it's, uh, gosh, I feel like what has been most interesting to me consistently is that we, we do topics that I think, um, to me, on the face of them, seem very depressing. An early episode we did was on Amy Fisher, right. who was remembered um, and kind of known in the three TV movies made about her as somebody who uh, was just a teenager who felt like killing her married boyfriend's wife for no reason, and wasn't she evil, and wasn't she proof that there's something wrong with America's teens. And then you put a tiny bit more effort into it, and you see that she was someone who started a relationship with an adult man who forced her into sex work when she was very young and did not have the capacity to, to say no to what was happening to her. And you end up with a story of someone who didn't make good choices, but who you can see how each turn of events led them down a road that it was very difficult to come back from at a certain point. Yeah. And what I love about making the show is that we tell a lot of stories like that, and people talk about that not being something that depresses them, but that makes them feel more able to be compassionate for themselves and for others and to feel connected to other people in a different way. I'm so curious about the McDonald's hot coffee too. What did you <laughs> find out about this? Because I, I think that many people remember that whole thing and, mm -hmm. and I feel like that also started this whole idea of lawsuits and suing when something goes wrong. Completely, yeah, and it was a story that I remember, you know, this was, there were jokes about it seemingly on every sitcom, every late night host was talking about it, and it was known to us at the time as a story about this old woman who spilled McDonald's hot coffee on herself, sued because it was hot and it burned her. Shouldn't she have known it was hot? Why was she getting all these millions of dollars? Um, and this joke about how, you know, that means that she was on easy street. And in reality, you look at it and you see that uh, America is a country run by corporations, and it was in their interest to make it look like uh, this was something where somebody got money for nothing, when in fact this was a woman who she was not driving while she was drinking the coffee, she was in the passenger seat. The coffee at McDonald's at the time was kept not at the heat of the surface of the sun, but not too far from that, and she had been a very active uh, senior who had extremely serious burns that really um, this really kind of destroyed her life. And also the kind of final cherry on top is that so many of these big settlements where you see someone awarded millions of dollars are later reversed on appeal or winnowed down to something much smaller. And that's not news that we hear about in the same way. Right, because you hear about that initial headline, but not, we yeah. lose interest in what ha the follow-up story to right. it all. So how do people react generally when they are relearning 
the events that that we all heard about. Yeah. I mean, they, they love it. I feel like it's it's a podcast whose popularity has surprised me, um, but that it's clear to me that this is, it kind of scratches an itch people have where, yeah. I mean, the, and the problem is not the people, right? We have um, all of us, as we are trying to talk about events that are unfolding, we have things to do, we have kids to drop off and pick up, we have laundry to transfer to the dryer. We cannot spend our days probing the nuances of the news stories that we are just trying to understand in headline form so we can get through the day. So it's people, I think, um, are very happy that they can find sources for someone who has taken the time to go out and find more details and, and bring them back to them. And it sounds like it's rewarding for you too, because you get to learn a little bit more. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I love doing it. Um, I started off in academia and that turned out to be not the right path for me, but I love research. And my favorite thing uh, from the academic time in my life was the part where you're researching somebody who you want to write about for an article or you're going to teach a class on and you get to go out with your friend and excitedly tell them what you've been thinking about over coffee. And that's really what we're trying to do with the show. So uh, you mentioned that you have some friends here in Pittsburgh but you, and, and Mr. Smalls. Uh, what were you, how was the show last night and, and how did that go? What, are you taping a podcast while you're here? Um, so we're recording some of the live events. Okay, and, we can see. Yeah, oh, look at that. Yeah, so we did have a hot dog eating contest. <laughs> this is video of us at an event uh, last fall, but this is about what we did last night. That's me and Jamie Loftus, who <laughs> literally wrote the book on hot dogs. It's called Raw Dog. It's out on May 23rd. And uh, we got a little bit into competitive hot dog eating and decided to just demonstrate how hard it is for an amateur. Um, and it's extremely difficult, I have to imagine. It's very hard. We each uh, had one minute and we ate, um, I ate two hot dogs. She ate two hot dogs in change because she's a champion. I was a reporter in New York for a couple of years and covered the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. It's disgusting and amazing yes. <laughs> and it's like you can't look away but I'll tell you what's worse is the cannoli eating contest oh there's the cream everywhere it's a mess it's not yeah. it's for, not for the faint and of heart they dip them in water like the hot dogs yes they have oh. to dip it, right there's something <laughs> it's just it's not appealing at all um, you also host another podcast I want to ask you about quickly you yeah. are good what is it about so yeah this is a, a podcast about movies and every episode we have a guest come on and talk about a movie that's important to them uh, We've had my friend, local writer Candace Opper, on many times, most recently talking about Ghostbusters 2, which she <laughs> believes to be the perfect New Year's Eve movie, and I think she's right. And uh, it's, it's about movies, but it's also about how we use pop culture to try and find our way and to grow up. That's so true. Labyrinth, I don't know what that says about me, but that's my... Oh yeah, childhood movie. We haven't done a labyrinth episode yet. There you, you go. Yeah, come you on give me a call. Oh come on. Yeah. Thank you. And people can find you just about everywhere, right? Spotify, yeah. Apple. Yeah, Apple. wherever you get podcasts. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sarah, for taking time to be with us today.